Today, just how much trouble are we in? Hello again, it's Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Welcome to our latest post covering finance property news with a distinctively Australian flavour. Today, I want to try and answer a question which has come up quite frequently over the last couple of weeks and really also has come to the fore since I published my post on the GDP per capita recession. How much trouble are we really in in Australia? Now, there are a million ways to try and answer that question, but I want to focus on just one. Now, the Bank for International Settlements publishes a regular series of data points relating to debt. And one of the most interesting is the Credit to the Non-Financial Sector series, which was updated at the end of February. And within that, there is a very important series which is known as the Total Credit to Households Core Debt. And within that, one of the measures relates to the percentage of GDP. So for this particular series, we're comparing total household core debt with the GDP for each country in a whole series of countries across the globe. Now, when you do that, you find something really quite interesting, but also quite concerning. Now, this is a plot of some selected countries from 2000 onwards. And as you can see, the debt to GDP ratio has been growing through the 2000s. And by the way, the thick yellow bar is Australia. We then hit the GFC and Ireland just was below 120. And now, as we come up to date, actually up to the third quarter last year, we see that Australia is right at the top of the series with a debt to GDP ratio of 120.5. Now, that is extremely significant and very worrying. Remember that this is up till the third quarter last year. Since then, debt has risen further and our GDP growth has been a lot slower. So it's my expectation that the later number will be even higher than that. And it's also worth just looking at some of the other countries in the series. So for example, Ireland, as I said, hit a ratio just below 120 back around the time of the global financial crisis. In fact, it was 2009, so it was after the global financial crisis hit in 2007 and 2008. And now Ireland is significantly down, just over 40. And you'll also see in this series that Denmark hit 140 around the GFC and just after, and is now sitting at a lower level than us. And if you look at Canada or the United Kingdom or the US, you'll see that in each case, they are significantly below us. And by the way, Hong Kong, which isn't directly shown on this chart, is at around 68 compared with ours 120. So the jet to GDP ratio for Hong Kong is half what it is here. So on this particular measure, there is no country in the world that has a higher ratio than us. So there are a few points I want to make here. First, we're looking at the household ratio of debt to GDP. And the BIS has done a quite a good job of normalizing the results across multiple countries. So we can pretty much rely on the trends as being reasonably accurate. And we should therefore be very concerned because this high ratio, 120.5, basically says that we're debted out. And yet we know from other data that debt in Australia is still rising significantly faster than income and inflation. Okay, so we looked at the GDP to debt ratios. 
But there's another series which is also worth looking at, and that's the servicing ratio, the debt servicing ratio for households. And again, the BIS keep a series on this, and they published it quite recently up to the third quarter 2018. So let's just deal with the definitional issues first, and then we'll look at the data. So the BIS database for debt servicing ratios is defined as the ratio of interest payments plus amortizations to income. So essentially, as they say, this provides a flow to flow comparison, the flow of debt service payments divided by the flow of income. And they've used a relatively consistent methodology across multiple countries to get to the results that they've got. Now, before we look at the results in detail, it's worth saying, of course, that this is going to be partly determined by the size of the loans issued, but also by the interest rates on those loans. And we know that there's been a long term fall in interest rates over the last decade. So you would assume, would you not, that the debt servicing ratio should be very low now compared with where it was, say, in 2010. Well, don't be so sure. Let's look at the data. OK, so this is the debt service ratios of households to the third quarter 2018. We start back in 1999. And again, the thick yellow line is Australian households. And you can see up till 2006 and 2007, the ratios were rising. And you can also see that Denmark wins the prize for the highest ratio. And then post the GFC, as rates were cut, the debt servicing ratio fell. And you can see that around the world, that's pretty much true. But look at Australia. We've maintained a very high debt servicing ratio. And in fact, we are pretty much right at the top, just very slightly behind the Netherlands. Netherlands is 15.7. We're at 15.5. Now, this is a very worrying set of data once again, because it shows that even although cash rates, thanks to the RBA, are very low at 1.5%, the debt servicing ratio in Australia is 15.5 and it's right at the top of the range around the world. So once again, this is another leading indicator of risks in the system. And once again, I have to say, I'm amazed that the Reserve Bank and the Treasury and the government seem willing to dismiss this as being anything at all. So if I stand back and look at both debt to GDP ratios and debt servicing ratios, then I think we have to say, Houston, we have a problem. So this tells us and should warn us that we have a massive debt problem. Now, of course, we've seen some of this coming through in things like mortgage stress, in high delinquency rates, and some of the other metrics that we cover. To me, this is the canary in the coal mine because it shows that we have risks in the system. And just to re-emphasize, Ireland's debt to GDP ratio just before their economy crashed was lower than ours is today. So I'm afraid that really underscores that we are in a very serious situation. Now, before I go, just a quick reminder that on the 19th of March at 8 p.m. Sydney time, I'm going to run my next live stream show where you can ask me questions directly in the chat or beforehand by using my blog. And here's the link. I look forward to seeing you there and we'll have an interesting discussion about the latest data and I'll also update my scenarios again. If you found this post useful or informative, please do like it and share it through your social media channels. It's important that we get these messages out to as many people as possible. And if you haven't already subscribed, please do so by ringing that bell so that you get alerts for future posts. I'm Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Many thanks for watching. I'll talk to you again next time.